So I would like to call the Finance Committee meeting to order for January 29th, 2024 at 5.02 p.m. Um, I guess we don't need to call the select board to order yet because there's only one of you so far. Um, so first oh, order, thanks, actually Tim. before we start, um, I mean, as, as the first thing on the agenda, I just want to quickly make introductions. Um, Margaret Nardowitz has um, graciously agreed to fill in the rest of um, Allie Vandervelden's term, so she's willing to serve for a year with us. Oh, great. Um, she's put forward a request to Dan Graves and is in the process. She's not sworn in yet, so she's not actually a member of the committee. So we're really happy that you've agreed to do that. Yeah, um, thank why you. Why don't we just quickly go around and give a, a you know, two second, this is who I am and what my background is or something like that. You can go first or last. What do you want? I'll go last. <laughs> okay. I'm Jim Cambius. Um, I'm the secretary because I type fast. Um, because I'm <laughs> and he does a fabulous job. Yes. Hi there. I'm Ben Sharp. I'm an attorney in uh, Northampton. Um, lived in Deerfield probably since about 2000. Uh, We're going to need the three kids um, from public schools here. More mics. Here. And you're also our personnel committee rep, right? Oh, and I'm also on the, yes, personnel committee rep from this committee to the personnel committee. I'm John Poreski. Uh, I've been in Deerfield 35 years and I'm retired. I retired 14 years ago. I used to be a CPA and a chief financial officer. I also served on the capital improvements committee for I don't know, good half dozen years, and that's my spiel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Julie Chelfont. I'm chair of finance committee. I've done some other towns. I was in, did a bunch of stuff with PTA. I've had kids through, go through the schools. Um, my day job, I work in MIT doing research in uh, ship design stuff. Go ahead. All right, now I'm Mark Brennan. I'm our representative uh, on the Capital Improvements Planning Committee and chair that as well. Um, my day job, I'm a director of software engineering. I'm Beth Brown. Um, I, oh, I'm on the rec committee, but <laughs> <laughs> for, for a lot of years now. And um, during my day job, I am a math teacher at Greenfield Community College. Oh, that's um, where you're at. Yeah. I'm not official. I'm, I'm not the finance committee yet, as you know. But um, my name is Margaret Narnowitz. I am recently retired. Um, I served. A little over 34 years in public service, um, 16 of which were as a town administrator in towns in Central Mass and, and Western Mass. Um, I also served as Amherst Town Clerk for years um, early on in my career. Um, I'm a resident of Deerfield for 35 years, and uh, I'm actually really excited to begin following this town as opposed to uh, serving the other towns that I've that I've served. So, thank you for the interns. Can you spell your name? It's N-A-R-T-O-W-I-C-Z. And thank you all for your, your service. Um, years ago, I actually served on this town's capital improvement planning committee. Years ago. <laughs> okay. Thanks. All right, so next item on the agenda is the review of the minutes. <coughs> Jim? I move that we uh, Accept the minutes for the uh, meeting of October 23rd, 2023. Can you make that motion since you recorded them? Yeah. No yeah just be, be sure to okay. speak into the mics, you guys. Kind of please. Give me extra incentive? No. Yep. Second. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to keep it legal. Yep. I'll second them. All right. Any discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. All right, that's unanimous. And then we have last week's also, right? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the meeting of January 22nd, 2024. We have a second. I'll second that. Any discussion? No. Okay, all those in favor? That's unanimous. All right. Um, so we are ready to start in on our miscellaneous budgets. Yahoo. Brenda, why don't you? Okay, well, let's start with the moderator, 114-5100. Uh, 
It's in your tab one. Great. Um, this has just gone up a small amount. Um, we had been paying Dan $50 per special town meeting, and he felt that the work uh, involved with the special town meetings might warrant a little bit more. So he's doubled that to 100 per meeting. So as usual, we budget for two, and um, that would be $200 instead of the 100 for the special town meetings. So that brings his budget to 500, uh, which is a 25% increase. Okay, thank you. Do you have a motion? I'd like to make a motion to recommend uh, account number 114-5100 in the amount of $500. Do a second. Second. Any discussion? Yes. The, the budget sheet says $50 each. Should that be taken out, Brenda? Yeah. Yeah, it should say $100 each. So it's going to be two meetings as in the past. This is the budget amount, right? Well, that's uh, that's what we budget for, right. correct. Yep. Any other discussion? All right. All those in favor? Aye. That's unanimous. All right, next. Okay. The next one is uh, the Finance Committee. It's 131 5400. Uh, this is for general expenses, for trainings that you might go to, for your dues. Um, the budget hasn't changed for years, so it's set at the 500,000. Or, excuse me, 500,000. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Wow, that was a faux pas. Um, 500. All right. Do we have a motion? <laughs> I'll, I'll make a motion. Mo oh, go ahead. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, Finance Committee budget of 130, account 130, 150, 400 for $500. A second. All right. Any discussion? So this pays dues for ATFC, and then I've gone actually to a couple training sessions, and it pays the, um, which you all are welcome to go to, too, if you want to spend a Saturday going to a, uh, wherever um, but they're, they're generally good presentations any questions or discussions all those in favor all right that's unanimous so it's six right mm-hmm yep all right the next one is personnel board 152-5400 oh. What is it? 152, 52. Um, Casey uh, developed this number this year, but she did run it by the personnel board, and they they approved of the 500 versus the 750. Okay. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to recommend that. Uh, yeah, that we recommend uh, account number 152-5400 in the amount of $500. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Uh, unanimous. Six zero zero. Uh, Peg Access Capital, which is one fifty five dash fifty eight hundred. That's preset by the contract. Um, the four thousand comes in in the previous year and it's set aside for capital. Uh, we have spent some money recently in 2023. We spent $15,000. I don't know if that's been, if anything's been done with that. I know there was some issue, but okay. What's PEG? Sorry. PEG? Is that an acronym for? Uh, it's for our, our community. Education there you go. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Pays for FCAT, right? Or pays for equipment for FCAT? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Jonathan. Do we have a motion? I move to recommend uh, the sum of $4,000 for uh, account number 155-5800, Peg Access Capital. 
So. Do we have a second? Second. All right. Now we're ready. So there's 51,866 carryover, right? Mm -hmm. None has been spent. So we're going to add to 4,000? That's correct. Does, does there any plans for spending this, what's now almost 56,000? Is there a budget for it or? Jonathan? I'm just trying to. I don't know. I know, I know the town has had ideas and Casey has tossed some things around uh, for things that we've needed here, but um, you want to speak to that, Casey? I can speak to it a little bit. Um, there's some updates in the main meeting room we need to do. We had kind of held off to see what was going to happen in terms of moving the office space, but I don't know how soon that's going to happen, but we do have to deal with some of the issues in the center of the year, in the room, in which you can see. Um, and that would be where that would come from. So if we were... Account? If we go forward with the 1888 building and put a room in there, then some of the equipment that would be installed in that room could come from this fund. Um, if that yes. doesn't happen, if we were to upgrade equipment in this room, then that would come I from had that asked room. that we'd be able to migrate some of that equipment when I initially asked for a um, estimate. Okay. I apologize, I got involved in a conversation. But how much do we is do you really plan on spending? I missed that if you said it. It could be anywhere from fifteen to twenty five thousand dollars. It depends on what we need. Okay. Uh, we don't want to spend too much because we want to see what's going to happen if we end up being able to move office space. On the other hand, this is the only money we get to support our ability to provide government access, peg access. So public sector, access for meetings or broadcasts oh I'm, I'm all for spending the money i just i don't see the need to budget four thousand dollars more when we're already we're we're, re to, we're required to this 4, we're required 000, to do certain budgets this four thousand right, what's that well the in the in the contract the contract gives us a certain amount per year specifically for capital expenditures and the amount that we received in 2023 was $4,000. So that goes into the budget for 2024, just like we've been doing all along. Okay. So it's set aside for capital. And the fact that it's built up might be partly because we've been talking about moving into another building. Um, but I don't know. So the 4,000 well, is in revenue then also? It was in revenue for fiscal year 23. So now we're budgeting for that 4,000 okay. in fiscal 24. Yeah. Who contract with whom? Uh, Comcast. Comcast. Thank you. Yeah. Julie, can I say one other thing, please? Yeah, go ahead. Um, one thing everybody needs to keep in mind is the federal government is, and they may have already decided, I honestly don't know. They've been talking about removing this type of funding, in other words, making, not forcing the cable companies to pay it towards public access. So we may see this go away in 2026. We have, we'll end up having to renegotiate a contract relatively soon. I think it starts next year, but okay. everybody needs to keep in mind this may be a finite amount of money that doesn't get replenished. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's going away. My understanding is it's going away because of streaming services and uh, yep. the federally protected monopoly that is cable television is uh, weakening. So, yeah. Hmm. Um, just to clarify, so the $4,000 sum is a, is a percentage or a sum mandated by our contract? It's a dollar amount mandated by the contract that Comcast submits to us in addition to their quarterly payments. Okay. Um, can I ask a question? Just yeah, uh, go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> the reference to fifty-six thousand dollars being an account is that in here somewhere? I, I just that's that's just the carryover that's that okay, you're seeing in the budget report okay. in the in the monthly reports. All right. Yeah. I, I didn't have the monthly reports. So I was just mm -hmm. wondering if I was missing something. No, no. Um, let's see. It's it's right there. That's our carry forward. Mm -hmm. Margaret, you had a question? Uh, yes. So, um, 
The 4,000, just to make it crystal clear, the 4,000 that would be funding this line is coming from the town's um, peg access. Correct. Fund. Okay. Yes. And then the other question I have is, is uh, regarding the license agreement and uh, where people are actually dropping their cable services. How have our license agreements payments been looking? I I, you know, I haven't really um, analyzed them greatly, but I want to say that they're pretty similar to what they have been in the past. There's a bill that they're trying to move forward in Massachusetts to have franchise fees come off of streaming as well. Oh. It hasn't been approved yet, but they're trying to do it. Yeah. So. But I, I really haven't seen a drop in the revenues. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Any further discussion? Um, Go for and it. And I hope I'm not confusing things, but on the revenue side of this, is that the, the line where it talks about the, the fees of about 175, 180,000? It includes peg access? Yes. Oh, that's that's okay. correct. So that's actually budgeted for a $5,000 increase, as though we're anticipating that there's going to be more revenue. We are though. anticipating more revenue, okay. but the reason I. Um, increased that is mainly due to the uh, food truck revenues that we've been collecting through the Board of Health. Okay, so when it says fees, and then includes peg access, it's really, peg access is not a big part of that line. Well, peg access is a big part it of it. Is. It's okay. about 90,000. Okay, well that's helpful for us to yeah. understand when we're talking about the four that we're putting back in. But there's 90 coming in. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it more than covers the quarterly fee that we pay to FCAT for their services. Yeah. Okay. So that'd be a shame if that went away. What's that? That'd be a shame if that went away. Yeah. <laughs> um, any further questions? All right, so it's been moved and seconded for PEG Access Capital item 155-5800 for $4,000. Any further discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous 600. All right, so we can go to 171 5400, which is the Conservation Commission. Uh, that um, budget <coughs> request has not changed from last year. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to uh, approve the budget for Conservation Commission, account 1715400 for $2,000. Do you have a second? Second. <coughs> Any discussion? Uh, yeah. Do we know why the postage increased from 200 to 900 from 2023 to 2024? And do we actually need that for 2025? Oh, good point. Most likely, yes. Uh, it, there just seems to be so much more activity. Um, than there had been in the past, which was why we were always, um, or it seemed like, not, well, I guess not always, but we were spending more than, than what we'd budgeted, um, th thus the increase in the request. You know, it's, it's a fluctuating thing, but um, it does seem like they've been doing more the last few years and using it. So last year's note said that the budget reflects 2023 actuals. There was a large increase in projects for more postage. And then they also had a new person that needed MAC training. Right. Last year. That's why the dues and training went up also. Yes. Yeah. But now that stayed up. Are they going to need new training this year too? I think every time they have somebody new, they should be trained. Okay. And I, I think Pete, Pete is on top of that more so than maybe some of the past chairs of the of the Conservation Commission. Oh, I mean, don't, don't you I, think? I, 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 yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He's a great leader. He is. Yeah. Well, and I think part of that is his background, his training. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? Go ahead. Uh, is there any... Uh, Do you want to come up and sit with us just so that you, you could... Why just come up so you can, yeah. Yeah, I'm just thinking uh, so people can hear you. Just a really quick question about the Wetlands Protection Fund. 
Um, are there any appropriate expenses in the general government budget that wetlands protection fund balances could be applied to? Yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, there are. We started doing that last year. It's now a funding source for the omnibus budget. Uh, based on our assistant in that department who kind of figured out how much time she spent working on, on wetlands issues. And now she's keeping track also for um, expenditures related to wetlands um, in regards to postage for any of those kinds of fees um, so that if we need to run that back against, against that wetlands protection fund, we can. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, we were digging last year for ways to support the budget. <laughs> Any further discussion? All right, so it's been moved and seconded for the Conservation Commission 171-5400 for $2,000. All those in favor? Unanimous, 600. Okay, let's go to open space, which is the next page, 172-5400. Uh, that budget hasn't changed. The only year that it was, uh, we had budgeted the 10,000 was for the, um, the, the, the new rent plan. plan. Yeah. Make a motion to approve open space committee budget account 172,5400 for 250 bucks. We have a second. I second. Right. <clears throat> Any discussion? Nope. All those in favor? That's unanimous, 600. Okay, let's go to planning board. It's just the next page, 175-5400. That request has not changed from last year. Are they spending pretty much $2,000? Oh, hang on, let's get a motion and uh, whatever. I move that we recommend the sum of $2,000 for account number 175-5400, the plan Okay. Do we have a second? Second. All right. So it looks like, I mean, when you look at all the other committees, this is a lot of training. Is there, yeah, they're spending this on training? <clears throat> no, no, not really. Um, seems like most of their expenditures are um, postage. Uh, oh, okay. But there again, Amy's keeping track of that and whatever postage we can run against the revolving fund, we do. Um, last year, you see, we spent almost $2,000. It's hard to know, you know, whether you're gonna have, it's, it's like the Conservation Commission, how many, how many projects are we gonna have before us that we need to address and, and send, send uh, certified mailings out for. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So what was the actual expense in 2024? Uh, that's the current year. I don't know oh, so we're far. Still. Oh, we still. Oh, it's. Yeah, I want to say it's like four hundred dollars, but um, so far, yeah, we still have until it's the end four. Of June, yeah, right. it's four four eleven so far. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? Questions? Margaret. Just curious about master plan updates and how have they been funding the ma uh, periodic master plan updates? Have they been working with the COG through COG funding? You know, uh, maybe Casey can respond to that. Hi, Margaret. Hi, Casey. <laughs> um, actually, we've been having those conversations for the past two years, oh, and there has been a conversation about getting help from the COG to do revise the master plan because it's old. I think it dates from 2000, 2001, but it's a pretty big lift. And although we would like to get help from the COG, particularly going, moving toward other issues we want to fix, I don't know that that's going to be able to be done in 2025. We have our to local technical assistance grant review on Wednesday with the select board, but the new planner and assistant town administrator myself and the planning board chair met today and we think we want to do a few more baby steps to get there so no we have not requested additional funding toward that master plan work okay thank you casey thanks any further discussion questions 
been moved and seconded for the planning board 175-5400 at $2,000. All those in favor? That's unanimous. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Six zero zero. Do you guys want to call the select board meeting to order? Yes. We'll make a motion to open the select board. Second. Uh, uh, 527. Five All right. Okay. So, Zoning Board of Appeals, which is the next page, 176 5400. Um, that request remains the same as it was last year. And this one, again, most of the expenditures are postage, and it all varies based on the amount of projects they have. Okay. We have a motion. Um, I move that we recommend the uh, a sum of one thousand dollars for the zoning board of appeals account number one seven six fifty four hundred. Do we have a second? That is the one. We're second. <laughs> okay. That is yes. Any discussion? Do we need to be concerned? Postage is going up. And these budgets are all pretty much the same amount for postage, but it's maybe it's peanuts too. Yeah. I think it is. It looks yeah. like okay. it varies so much depending on what's going on. It does. So I figured we'd address that when the time comes. You know, those small amounts can be quick reserve fund transfers. It's small. Yeah. yeah. Plus, okay. this request has a little note which says, "Hopefully, the thousand will cover it." <laughs> We all <laughs> yeah, that's. But I haven't seen that in another one. So Adam, 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 Adam wrote that oh, when okay. he uh, submitted his budget. So okay. I, I put in every comment that everybody has. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. All right. Any further discussion? Just no. second, yeah. Uh, I did. Marked it. Okay. All those in favor? G unanimous six zero zero. Okay, Ag Commission 179-5400, the next page. Um, we don't really have an active Ag Commission, but we leave 100 in there just in case. Okay, do we have a motion? Make a motion, approve Agricultural Commission budget count 179-5400 for $100. Second. Any discussion? Um, just, I guess, what is the Ag Commission, its purpose, are we required to have it? Well, it sounds like it would be good to have it, we don't, and how much is it costing the town to sort of administer something that we don't have or need? It if, if well, it doesn't cost it doesn't? us anything. Okay, but I'm just thinking all this paperwork, is it a requirement to have? Well, it, it is a voted committee, right? So I think it's established I, by yes, statute. statute. Okay. And, I, and I, think, I think while I was away, weren't they having a meeting recently about getting some things going. I don't know if it was last week or this week. And I know, there, I know there's Thursday. been discussion all along, but uh, Casey could probably speak to it better, but. Yeah, last Thursday there yeah. was a farmer's thing. Right. Well, maybe I couldn't right. get to, but. but. What do you think, Casey? Are we gonna <laughs> have an, ag, an active ag commission? <laughs> we, well, I'll be honest with you, we don't, and I think Everybody needs to remember, and it was actually my husband that reminded me of this. Everybody needs to remember that um, farmers work during some of the busiest seasons we have. Mm -hmm. However, comma, I would say um, we need to pound the pavement a bit more and see if we can get some folks interested and sort of set out what we think they could help us with in short spurts, like yeah. baby steps, because they are busy guys, women and men. Let's just face that well they were fairly active when we did the um when we became a right to farm community so we, we have they we were have sort of yep. come in upon occasion but we have it's been difficult for us to get to people to really see if they're interested so i think this is a good opportunity maybe that's one of the things the we could help with in our vacancy notices at annual town meeting yeah. mm. and i know that tim and trevor are here listening to me say that <laughs> but who's going to do it is going to be me. <laughs> so don't let me forget. <laughs> well, we have gotten Henry Melnick onto the MVP core group. Um, Good. So, yeah. Yeah. and we did have this rather successful, at least in terms of attendance, Farmers Forum, which I, I really think, you know, DEP was here. 
um, and uh, NRCS last Thursday it was and the pastries were good <laughs> oh they were very like how many good. people showed up how big was it I th well most of these chairs were full it, it was it was yeah. pretty full it was pretty good yeah mm -hmm. um, very well attended may I ask how Did we had 30 to 40 people right Tim at least yeah how yeah. many people would be on the agriculture capture commission is it five, is it five or I d I wouldn't know. It's either three uh, or five. Can't yeah. remember. Yeah, we do. Okay. Yeah, we okay. could find that for it. It would probably be cited in the bylaw. Right. Yeah. Or a range, sure. a range of members. I have to ask the town clerk. This is a lot of discussion for a committee that doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just curious about it. Yeah, and that's how we do have a lot of farmers. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. Yeah, make yeah, into something. Or stop funding. It's only 100 bucks. Yeah. All right. Any further discussion? No. So it's been moved and seconded for an agricultural commission 179.5400 at $100. All those in favor? That's unanimous 600. Okay. All right. Let's go to the Energy Committee 182 5400. Um, that budget hasn't changed from last year. We have a motion? What's that? Go ahead. Um, he notes, well, I, I, do you want to open it first? Do you want to have somebody sure. move it and second it? Anybody want to make a motion? Uh, I move that we recommend the sum of $1,000 for the for account number 182-5400, the Energy Commission. Committee. Committee. So last year. Second. Oh. Second. All right. Okay. Now you can go. Great. <laughs> So last year they didn't spend their thousand, but they encumbered a thousand for some trees that uh, Franklin Tech had set aside for them to plant. And I know they've gotten half of that project done because I have a check. Uh, I'll be writing a check for half of that um, this week. Um, but he's noted here that what they really want to do is is they want to educate people, you know, by by mailing things to people about various things, you know, like the energy. Um, you know, we have a savings from Eversource uh, with that bundled, mm -hmm. what do you call it? Aggregation. That? Yeah. Thank you. I know another focus this year for them is working with Darius and Frontier about a kind of a regional uh, green, green Communities Grant. So I don't know if they're going to use any money for research on that or hmm. mailing to or whatever, but I know they're working to try and... I think they're, they're hoping to get a grant to do some, um, uh, I, get, I forget what you call them, they're, they're kind of the systems that run the school, turn on the heat, turn off the heat, that kind of thing. Like they're all control systems. Good, thank you, control Thanks. system. Okay. Good. How much is encumbered, Brenda? It was a thousand that was encumbered uh, to cover a thousand dollar expenditure with the school. Like I said, I'll be writing a check for 500 of it, but there were um, half of the trees the energy committee took care of and the other half were from the for the town and the town hasn't taken their trees yet so so can I ask just a process question when you read the description here it says like materials and I'm not arguing against it this is purely a process question materials printing mailing costs and other projects and that kind of well I guess other projects covered anything like this totally indicates that they're going to do sort of education mailings materials and they bought trees which is very very different is that uh, okay i mean can they just do whatever with it as long as they all agree and vote to do it is it pretty much okay it's a general expense i mean i mean really you know if i felt like it didn't fit you know trees energy to me that fits but you know if i really felt that they were trying to spend money on something that didn't fit their <coughs> mission at all i would i would question it Okay. Usually they have a good answer for it, but yeah. I suppose trees could be called materials. Yeah. If you're planting trees, you need or other trees projects. <laughs> Mailing if you cut them down. <laughs> oh dear. All right, we're devolving here. Um, any other discussion on the energy committee? No, it's been moved and seconded for a thousand dollars for the energy committee item one eighty two fifty four hundred. All those in favor? That's unanimous, 600. 
All right, let's go to tab two, um, inspections department payroll. I, I didn't, uh, excuse me, uh, yeah, it's 241-5110. Uh, um, I didn't want to waste Bob's time to come here tonight because it seems like there usually isn't a lot of question for him. If you feel <laughs> that you want to have him come and speak to this, you certainly can. But um, his payroll is pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, you've got Bob, you've got um, Amy in there, and then you have um, the assistant inspectors. Yeah. Um, I did go that. through payroll and kind of look at what um, Wayne Shaw has been working and what Steve Baranowski has been working and felt that it warranted a little reduction in the number of hours that we were budgeting for, so I did do that. Uh, Bob also felt that they recently had gotten a raise to the 40 and he felt that it was, um, he felt like it was, it was a, a good enough amount for them to leave it at the 40. He felt like that was, that was a good number that maybe next year we would address um, a raise again for them. So in all, his budget has gone up 1.73%, which is nominal compared to most. All right, do we have a motion? Okay, I'll do it. Inspections Department Payroll Account 241-5110. Uh, I make a motion we approve their budget for $178,324. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? Yeah, do we know why they have the overtime here? I, I don't. I, we plugged that in last year, and I wanted to leave it in there in case there were some extra projects that Amy needed to work on uh, that took extra time above her 40 hours a week. I know she's really trying hard to get caught up, so I just left it in there for her. So it's overtime for Amy, not for the temporary, like the... What's that? It's, it's overtime for Amy, not for like the Correct. other... Correct. Oh, no, no, that's for Amy. Or whatever. Yep, okay. te definitely for Amy. Um, and I um, probably should point out that I know we might be, be getting some additional projects from the nonprofit schools, but that was built into the number of hours. That was still more, we, d we had that discussion, did, Bob okay. and I did, yeah. That's what I was Yeah, and we still felt like be a lot of this, gave, this gave them room Okay. That if that took more hours, that it would be. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. That, that's that was my only question. I know they have a lot of electrical going on, a lot of plumbing going on at both nonprofits, and would that, you know, would they need more hours for that? But you guys talked about. It, I think great. we're good. That's awesome. So these hours per year is that that's a pretty good indication of the FTE for these guys. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because one of the questions I have that I haven't asked you yet is. Um, whether we have FTE numbers for each department to give, it, it would help me to look at that to give myself a feel for the relative. We don't. What? We don't, okay. No. Oh. But we, like I could just add this up on each of the sheets that it's on and, mm -hmm. and do it myself, so I can do that, yeah, okay. Would you unpack the acronym FTE? Full-time equivalent, so it's. Sarah, Sarah yeah. does, does a full-time equivalent for the entire town that I need for the report that I give to DOR, but that's it. But it's not broken down by department, mm -hmm. so, okay. Oh. All right. Any other discussion of this? The other question we always ask is the, the income from their inspections covers is, is above oh, this? Oh, yes, yeah. definitely. Okay. Any other discussion? Questions? No? All right. So it's been moved and seconded for inspections department payroll 241-5110 at $178,324. All those in favor? All right. That's unanimous, 600. Okay. And then if you go to the next page, that's the um, department expense, 241-5400. Uh, and that budget is at the same request as last year, 4,950. Do we have a motion? I Anybody? move that we <laughs> recommend 
the sum of four thousand nine hundred fifty dollars for inspection of department expenses, account number two four one fifty four hundred. A second. A second. Any discussion? Yes. yes. So um, w for the permitting software that we bought, there was a capital expenditure associated with it. But I believe there was operational expenditures as well. That will be coming out of the contracted services. That'll budget. come out of contracted, even though, okay, even though there's not a contractor. Uh, all right. That, yeah, um, I, and I think partly because uh, there might be additional uh, departments that will be involved in that eventually, like the Board yes. of Health. Yeah. Okay. Yes. It, it's part of contracted services like we treat many other things, Mark. Okay. Just wanted to make sure that there's going to be a surprise. That later. we covered it, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Wondering if we can save the taxpayers a couple of grand. We've uh, been, the uh, budget's been higher than actual for a number of years, and it, so far this year it is too. We've only spent um, a little over $1,000. I'm wondering if maybe we can bump, reduce the 49.50 and save a little bit of money? Uh, usually if, if there's um, gas and mileage that gets distributed um, for the car that, some, that the town owns that some, sometimes gets used, it gets, it gets distributed at the end of the year. So um, you can see that we spent over 4,000 in 19, we spent over 4,000 in 2020, we spent 3,600 last year i think i think we're close enough i don't i don't think i would i don't know i i wouldn't squeeze him too much okay. if it were me uh, you know the um assistant <clears throat> inspectors will go to trainings they don't go to trainings every year and i don't know what's required to keep their licenses um but they do do trainings and if they were all going in the same year this would be spent there's an opening too, right? Or is there a person here now? They've got question marks for the building inspector. I, well, the that's, local that's inspector. For, that's for somebody to fill in for Bob. Oh, okay. Right. When he's on vacation, and I don't know who that person is. It just depends will be. on who you can get yeah. when he's gone. Okay. Got it. Are you okay? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm any other discussion? No. Nope. All right, so it's been moved and seconded for $4,950 for inspections department expense account number 241-5400. All those in favor? That's unanimous 600. Great. All right, let's go to tab five. Um, account number 541-5400, Council on <coughs> Aging. Um, we haven't been spending this. Uh, I don't know, Casey, do you want to speak to that at all? Sometimes we use these funds for programming um, that the Council on Aging might want to do. Most of that goes through the director, though. So I don't think that we should reduce it to a zero, though, because Council on Aging does need to have some funds available um, should they have something they want to get across. For instance, they could do some sort of a mailing that they might want to do as a group. Why was it increased, um, or like in 2021, it increased to 500, but then still nothing was, <laughs> they, <laughs> like, what, did someone they, have an idea? They thought they were going to get more yeah. busy, but. I they thought I they think, were going to do something. I think that was because was we, we reconstituted we the <laughs> we committee. Did. We did. Um, with the idea yeah. that they would do something and nothing's been done yet, right? Not really. okay. I mean, the, the director is doing a really good job, and so, you know, I, maybe at one of those times we had a shift in directors, but I think, you know, they are really active and they're doing a lot at the senior center. Um, so I think this is not as much needed. It could drop to 250. I don't think anybody would be upset, but it just rolls back into free cash at the end, anyway. So, right. Yeah. Either way, I don't think anyone will be hurt if it went to 250, honestly. But yeah, I think if you wanted to drop it to 250, this is one of those places we have a little bit of leeway. Yeah. Could we drop it more and just have them pay whatever they want for out of free cash and 
not just continue to um, fund this for 500 or, <coughs> or reduce it down? I don't know. Is there you, yeah, you could do a reserve well, do a fund transfer. Fund. Yeah. But you have to have something in the budget. So I wanted to ask, so the Council on Aging is a how many person committee or council? It, uh, for Deerfield, I think it's three, and then um, each town, well, because we're a kind of a region, each town kind of puts up three, but it's hard to get a quorum for them uh, a lot of times. And I assume that um, the senior center director is probably one of them? No. No? No, the senior center director is not, and they, the Council on Aging, um, Kind of a liaison to the board of oversight, and and, and okay. also works with the right. so with not, the director. And we're not <laughs> with duplicating effort. Yeah, <coughs> yeah. I don't know if the money comes to the council on aging from the state and then gets transferred right to, or does it just go right to the town? I can't remember how. That You're talking about the, the formula state. fund. Uh, yeah. That's that's a that's a a grant from the state that yep. each town gets. Right. And then I bill Waitley for theirs and I bill Sunderland for theirs and it all comes here and it gets spent. It doesn't go to the Council on Aging though, right? No. No. Okay. no it's okay. a grant from the Executive right. Office of Elder yeah. Affairs. Yeah. So yeah. and for the town. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So procedurally if we want to drop that down, do we just make a recommendation for a lower amount? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um I will make uh, a recommendation to, uh, yeah, in the, in the sum of $100 for uh, account number 541-5400 for the Council on Aging. Do we have a second? I'll second. second. All right. Um, so any discussion specifically on changing the amount 500 to 100 for the Council on Aging? Um, could, could you just explain this? Um, so if they were to spend 200, is that a big administrative hassle to do a reserve fund transfer? Compared? They'd have to do a reserve fund transfer or a transfer from another fund towards the end of the year. When you say they, the... Council on Aging would have to request it. Request it, and then somebody <laughs> else in the town has to... That's us. That's us. So, so I'm if, just thinking about your, your administrative if, work to... In other words... We don't we spend want to more than five hundred dollars on <laughs> fussing yeah, with the people. Well, I'm just saying things. exactly. So, and yeah. I totally understand Mark's point, And you can, there's some other moribund committees where you could have like a policy. Why don't we just, if it's non-existent right now, just give it a hundred dollars. On the flip side of that, if something happens and it just causes the town to have the folks in the town to have to do a bunch of administrative work, then maybe put the policy at a different number. Yeah, like I'm five, not like five hundred. That's all, and then. Do you know what I mean? Because as you someone said, it all just goes back to free cash anyway. Right. So I think we should just be careful about, I mean, I understand the sentiment, because, uh, but, but I would be curious as to if it's a real pain then. Well, I, you know, I'd have to put together the request. I'd have to have the, somebody from the Council on Aging sign it, bring it to you. You'd have to vote it if it was a reserve fund transfer request. If it was an appropriation transfer, I'd bring it to the select board. Same, same procedure, bring it to yeah. the, but bring it to the select board, and then you would ratify it. And that can only happen the last two months of the fiscal Correct. year. Correct. Yeah. So I, I guess I would be somewhat inclined not to do this given the level of money that we're talking about. Um, I don't think, yeah, I don't think $400 is going to gain us anything, but that's, yeah. yeah. I just figured I'd recommend going back to its previous level since they haven't spent it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I did want to ask, refresh my memory, is, am I correct in remembering that the Community Preservation Act funds also include something for senior services or senior Senior housing. Senior housing. Oh, housing yeah. specifically. Yeah. Okay. It's actually not restricted to senior. It's community housing is the proper term. Housing and specific. affordable housing is in, in, in that rubric. And seniors are people who need affordable housing. So it's not specific to seniors. Does, does the finance committee um, often go back after you've reviewed several budgets? Do you often go back and just? Um, review certain ones that you've had questions with so this is a possibility here that you could come back if you're really trying to fine-tune the numbers yeah to keep yeah. from using as much free cash as possible and we've done on a far more contentious issues than this <laughs> yeah <laughs> yep. I do sometimes wonder if we should like try to rate like yeah time spent this is by dollar saved. <laughs> for $500 I call a motion all right 
Um, so there's a motion to change from 500 to 100 for Council on Aging. The motion has been called. Oh, we have to vote. I'm not calling the motion. All right, so we're going to vote on calling the motion. All those who are in favor of calling the motion. All right, the motion is called. Um, so we're going to vote on whether to change 500 to 100. Um, all those in favor? That's two. All those opposed? Four, two, four, zero. So that does not pass. So I don't believe we have a motion on the floor for Council on Aging at 500. Would somebody like to make that motion? But can we make a note to like revisit this if, if in the end, towards the end we're like looking for something? For 400 yeah, bucks, if that's going to yeah. save us, you yeah. bet. <laughs> Okay. Well, we wish. <laughs> it all adds up. <laughs> it does add up, though. Right. I move that we recommend the sum of uh, 400 <laughs> for the <laughs> what? council on aging. What, what are you just all talking right. about? Do we have a second? Versus I'll dollar? second that. <laughs> all right. Any discussion? So we, don't have a mo we don't have a motion on the motion for five? No, right. we don't have a oh, motion so for anything yet. Start talking until we have that. All right, so we have a motion for yeah, 400 for Council on Aging. Any discussion? The motion's for 400 now? Yes, for <laughs> 400. All those in favor? That's four. All those opposed? Two, zero. That carries. Council on Aging is now $400. 400. Let's see. 400. Next. All right. Um, I don't actually have the budget yet for the Veterans District Assessment. We have not received that. So let's go to 549-5400 for the ADA coordinator. This is another one of those budgets that... Which one? 549-5400. Yep, 549-5400. But this one's already been reduced. <coughs> It, it's never been spent that I've was since I've been here. But who serves as? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Who serves as the town's ADA coordinator? Uh, Kevin. Kevin. That's what I thought. So he, rightfully, he should be getting this, but nobody's ever put the stipend through the payroll system. No, it's the town administrator, Brenda. Oh, it is the town administrator. It is. Oh, okay. It is. <laughs> My question would be, is it part of the town administrator's job description to serve as the ADA coordinator? It's not in the job description, Margaret, but it's the assignment that the <coughs> select board's given. <coughs> you guys voted it. <laughs> uh, Whose guys? We need a motion. Was I involved with That's this? That's the select board. I can't remember this. I don't recall. I thought it was Kevin always time, so. I move Kevin always helps me try. Right. Go for it, Beth. I move to recommend um, for account number five forty nine fifty four hundred two hundred fifty dollars. Second. Second. Any discussion? Is there a requirement that this be uh, in the budget? Yes. Because it helps with you know, you need an ADA coordinator when you're applying for certain grants. Sorry, let me rephrase that. I, I understand that the town probably needs an ADA coordinator, but is there a requirement that there be a separate line item budget for $250, which it sounds like it's not for anything, it was intended to be a stipend so. and not- It probably was a stipend at the time. Yeah. It's not for anything related to it. Right. And we never really used it. Right. So, okay, so. Um, I don't know if it needs to be budgeted or if it's just a policy thing that it can be part of a job description that needs to get <coughs> Or simply a non-stipended appointment. Yeah. Yeah. Um. <coughs> well, it's not really easy. You know? <laughs> I know we probably spent more than two hundred and fifty dollars worth of Kevin's time just on the on the uh, ADA compliant accessible handicap parking outside this year, which yeah, I mean, I don't know. It probably should be uh, not, should have been awarded to to him. For, that's not the debate though, because yeah. then you you 
you know, you can't be giving out a stipend every time somebody oh, I know. does something I, I, related I, I, to an ADA compliance. It sounds issue. like an administrative thing that has never been followed through properly. Right. And I don't know yeah. that that's a good or a bad thing, but. Casey, you had so. a comment? My comment was sort of along Tim's lines. We actually handle this as a team. Um, and in fact, it's not just me or Kevin that get involved. We also have the building commissioner involved because these things cross pathways. Um, and in fact, Tim's right. We just had an accessibility question that we had to solve. So it could pay for materials or for support towards ADA activities. And in fact, we have to buy a new sign. So to replace the sign that we needed to actually make ourselves compliant. So, have to this so there is a need, even if it's intermittent. Yeah, no, it's not right. It's just a, it's just Jim? a line item appropriation. Um, so this specific, but this budget, 549-5400, is this a stipend for the position or is this expenses, ADA expenses? Because the title is actually kind of vague. It just says ADA court. It says ADA coordinator because we've never really had to dip into it except in an expense item, so far as I remember, but I can check so with it's, Kevin. It's, in this case, we actually had to buy materials okay, so to correct an accessibility issue, so and it was within the last month. So we should consider this an expenses budget for the ADA coordinator so rather than paying for an ADA coordinator. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. I'm good with that. For materials. Okay. So are we anticipating expenses then? Is that, is that what I heard from you, Casey? Anytime we have to deal with a compliance issue, that could be considered an expense. And we're, we're anticipating that? Intermittent. It's usually a compliance issue is something we notice or it's something that we receive a complaint about. Oh. In this case, we received a complaint from the Architectural Access Board about how our handicap space and van accessibility space was placed in the parking lot. <clears throat> from the stipend perspective there's a fair amount of training that can go into this and in fact we're going to have to ramp that up so that we're we as a group as the town can respond better so this is going the wrong way <laughs> so the money's being spent it's just not it's just not being posted yeah. to this account that's right. all yes, right. it's merely an accounting issue really yeah. wait so it's not right. coming out of this account no we haven't spent anything we haven't spent account. anything we haven't spent you anything spent it, in the entire 10 if years they're I've buying been here. a sign it's coming out of some <laughs> other account but so, it's not so the sign's right. not going to come out of this account is, is what uh, yeah so kevin hasn't reordered what he needs to reorder yet I, I'd like um, to make a motion to reduce this it's just here. when it gets there and he and i he and i haven't talked about that we just know we have to do it <laughs> All right, I'm making a motion to reduce this number to zero. So you're I don't think you should reduce it to zero. We may actually need to keep it in the budget, Mark. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll, As an I'll, item, just like you have to do with EMD, you have to have some emergency management money directed somewhere in uh, a budget. All right, I'll, I'll reduce or I'll re retract my motion then. Okay. Are you anywhere near the sixteen but, million dollars yet? Trying. <laughs> 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 but I guess I would just add to what Mark's saying though, if it's if it's something that the town has not used since 2019, just administratively, bureaucratically, workflow-wise, why is it even needed anymore? That, I guess, is... Because we still get accessibility questions. We had one two Casey, years no, Casey, ago that did not require, you but, know, a payment to a person or materials, right, but, but it Casey, required an entire day of time on my part and council's part for accessibility for a town meeting. I totally get that, Casey, but it has nothing to do with this budget account. I mean, I get that we. But it have does, because there is an accessibility requirement. We have to follow the rules. And if we have money, we need money to follow rules. We need a budget. But you're not spending the money and you're doing it anyway. It's being spent but posted to another account, right? I have no idea. This is uh -huh. intermittent. And no, we did not charge off legal time for this because it falls within a cert or it fell within the parameters. Council and I felt it fell within the parameters of getting to town meeting our our annual our monthly payments at that time. If it had gotten any broader, then we may have needed to spend some money. But we managed it. And like I said, it's intermittent. It's only happened in the time that I've 
been assigned this duty and worked with Kevin on it, it's only happened twice. Um, I, I, again, the amount of money, it's not yeah, worth it's this kind of discussion. discussion. I agree yeah. with that. I agree. So. We'll revisit it. All right. <laughs> Any further discussion? No, it's been moved and seconded for ADA coordinator, 549 $250. All those in favor? It's unanimous, <laughs> zero, zero. Next. Uh, um, the next it's, budget. Um, well, I was just wondering the same thing. I hadn't uh, followed up with Candace today, so I did just send her an email a few minutes ago. I have not okay. heard back. Well, let's keep doing our miscellaneous. And yeah, so the rec director's salary is 634-5110. Can we, where are we? Going, can I interrupt one sec? Yeah. Julie, we, on the list of items we're going to review, assuming we're doing it in sequence, we skipped over 543 5400 Because it's not yeah. in. Yeah. Right, she hasn't ready yet. She's we don't have that budget yet. Okay. Rec department. Could you say that again? The number where, where are the rec? Six thirty four dash fifty one ten. Thank you. Do we have a motion? Yeah. I'll make a motion to recommend that uh, we go go behind the library. Go six three four. Oh, okay. Dash Sorry. <laughs> uh, I'd like to make a motion for uh, account number six three four five one one zero recreation department director salary that we recommended the amount of sixty five thousand five uh, nine hundred and fifty five dollars. We have a second. Second. Everybody got it. <laughs> okay. Brenda, any comments? Yeah. What's that? Any comments? Um, no, there's really nothing nothing to comment there. We had increased her um, number of hours last year to be a little more in line with how much time she spends on the, on the uh, recreation program. I know she spends a lot more time than this, yeah. but I think she's, she's okay with the 37 and a half hours a week. Um, okay. Yeah, her husband's pay is not on here either but I'm willing to accept this one. I, yeah. I know, I, they spend so much time. She works so hard. So this is in accordance, this is just a step increase from last year. Yes. Right. And then is there, what's the COLA this year? Uh, it's 2%. 2%? Yep. Yeah. So it's basically a 4.5% um, increase. Okay, and the um, personnel has voted the COLA and uh, yeah, we, personnel has the select board hasn't agreed to that. Okay. The select board hasn't voted it yet. Maybe I should chime in. I, f I feel like I've been a bit of a poor representative to the personnel board from the finance committee because I don't think I've ever reported back to the finance committee. <laughs> And that's not a reflection of how boring the personnel meetings are, yeah. or that you know <laughs> things do actually happen there. Yeah. Um, but I guess I should just step in here because that is a discussion that we had, and almost felt like a finance committee meeting. But um, the personnel committee uh, went with a two percent increase, which I imagine probably doesn't make folks happy in town, perhaps our employees. Um, but I think there was a sense of sort of looming budget potential issues, but there was a comparison made and we asked at the meeting about um, the union, the folks who were you know, under, under union contracts and it seemed like the answers we got back were that this next year's raise was a 2% raise. So we voted under, I can't speak for everyone else on the committee, I'm just saying, we, we, yes, we did a 2% recommendation, but I think there was a general consensus, if I could say that, that it was sort of looking at the teacher's contracts and maybe some other contracts, and we were told that this, this current year in those contracts was a 2% raise. So that's where that number comes from. And Plus, call it. That's, and, uh, always. 
uh, on those yes, contracts? We, Will well, they have a call have or an a, addition to the two percent? Yes. Do you know? Yes, because there's a. Um, what's it called? Cable? They have steps and they have a cost of living adjustment right. or base. But the base wage increase is what they call it, John. But what's the whole step chart called? The technical name for that? Oh, they have a compensation plan similar com to what we have with yeah. different numbers. Right. Yeah, there's a whole compensation plan. Classification and stuff. So, Casey, can, uh, and if you don't mind, um, the unions have contracts that stipulate a specific COLA and a wage increase? That's correct. Because COLAs, uh, you know, I'm looking at inflation in some years when it was 10% and we didn't give a very big COLA. And then I'm looking at times right now where we're possibly going to come back into the 2 2.5% inflation rate and we're talking about a 4.5% increase for people. So at some point it sounds kind of random to assign a number. But maybe it's not, and and that I I must I must admit that I'm confused about why the recommendation for two two percent came out when inflation is at three point one right now. Well, your your steps, your, your steps uh, acknowledge right. that people are learning more right. and are more that. proficient at right. their positions. Right. That's what the step okay. is. So the, this is this is a discussion about. People learn more as they work more and they get compensated in the step process. Right. And now we're trying to reflect the cost of inflation Correct. as well. Correct. Yes. I just want to have a discussion about what does this actually mean? Um, so, it, you know, it does, it sounds like, you know, some people come up, what are you giving a cola for? It's like giving a tip. Some people give 10%, some people give 20%. So I just wanted to understand. Yeah, it's supposed to be cost. Cost yeah. of living is right. in the name, right? Cost of living. So the 2 percent. And so what I do is I take a look back at a year mm -hmm. and, pres and I can send some of this information out to you, Tim, but I take a look back and provide a recommendation and that look back is the Northeast CPI um, of inflation. And it, you, they tr if we track it for a year, we have a better idea of the fluctuations up and down. And like you said, some years we had lower Colas and other years we had larger ones, but right. we also three and a half years ago did a classification compensation study that tried to even some of those numbers out so they weren't quite so high up and down because it, it there were years where it was higher than that. Right. I just bring, bring this up because I know that there's a lot of misunderstanding about how the town budget increases and this is one of those areas where I think people think we're frivolously giving money away and um, you know some of it's in contracts the teachers contract the police the fire department um, <clears throat> DPW so it's not by really and large this does not affect a lot of people because <laughs> yeah. we have more contracts than we used to um, question for Casey Casey mm -hmm. are the employment contracts including for the schools online where mm -hmm. the public can see them and include and the Class and comp plan for the town? Class comp is up there. Um, I don't remember about the employment contracts for the various unions, Margaret, but I can check. Okay, thank you. Any um, no. further? Go ahead, John. I have a question for David. I just want to make sure I understand this. So, when you talked about the personnel commission committee declaring a 2% increase, that was a cost of living increase? Um, Yes. So, so well, it basically, it just it affects changes all the steps. So there's a comp classification plan that big grid with yeah. and steps, however many years, you know, whatever step you're on, and that those numbers are not fixed in time. So a two percent um, change was added to all those numbers. Right. Okay. But that was as a cost of living. Right. Uh, yes, it was as a cost of living. Just making sure that uh, increase. Yeah. Yes. And, and it's also um, trying to keep that expensive comp plan kind of current, too, because, like, the, the less you give it, you know, all of a sudden now you're way out of whack and now you have to do a whole study again. So trying to find that happy balance. So one final question, I hope. Um, are we saying that the comp chart changes by 2% so that the next, the next one is going to have a higher figure in its sure. step 
So like if you go from five to six and we add 2% this year, is that 2% bumped over into the comp plan and go up? Yes, the whole comp yeah. goes. So all the numbers change. Right. Mm -hmm. All the numbers change. Mm -hmm. May I make a motion to call the question? Sure. <laughs> I, I don't hold that just for a second. Okay. Any further discussion? Yeah. That's easy. yeah I, I, th I thought we were ready anyway. So. Yeah. Um, okay. So it has been moved and seconded for Rec Department Director Salary, item six thirty four fifty one ten. It's sixty five thousand nine hundred fifty five dollars. All those in favor? That's unanimous six zero zero. Otherwise, we'd have to vote on. Yeah. Yeah. Thing. Get it. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, no, no problem. Thank you. Let's see if okay. that's a vote. Yeah. All right. Uh, the next page: Historical Commission six ninety one dash fifty four hundred. For eleven hundred and seventy-five dollars, we have a motion. I move to recommend uh, sixty uh, six hundred ninety-one fifty-four hundred for the amount of one thousand one hundred seventy-five. Second. Right. Brenda, do you have anything for us? I, there's really nothing to, um, I, don't, I don't know that there's anything to discuss. He's noted down here we have a funded, or the, I know last year they funded a project that the select board wanted to do. Um, so he was not able to spend the money that he wanted to on, on the things that he'd budgeted for. But they oftentimes don't get to their projects anyway, so. Well, it's been the same for a whole bunch of years, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, some of these items um, could possibly qualify for CPA funding, <coughs> correct? Conservation grade storage boxes for historical archives and things like that? That's what they, oh. Yeah, Did they, they fund did. it from that? No, they funded it from this okay. budget. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Good thought. Mm -hmm. Very good thought. It might have been that they missed the the um, deadline for for funding through CPA, so they just quickly did it through historical. That's that's my thought on it. But you know, the historical commission often um, does larger CPA funded projects rather than this. Um, which, but. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? That's unanimous, six zero zero. All right, so 692-5800 is the Veterans Memorial Day Committee expense. Um, you can see they spend it every year, and then some. They have a couple of other funds that they use, um, although those are, you know, we're they don't have a lot of money left in some of those funds, and we still have people that donate on, on a yearly basis, but it's not keeping up with the additional expenditures. So at some point, they're going to ask us for more, but right now, it's 2000 I make a motion to approve Veterans Day Memorial Day expense count 692-5800 for $2,000. Second. Second. I'm going to have to one. recuse <laughs> myself for this. Um, my son is the bugler. Um, so, there's a member of my household who has a financial interest in this. I never recused myself. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's a big thing. He gets paid for doing it? He got slipped an envelope. <laughs> I slipped an envelope. That's not much. Very cool. But I fully support it. <laughs> Any discussion? All those in favor? Mm -hmm. um, so if you've recused, then you're not going to abstain. You are going to abstain. All those abstain. against? Yeah. Abstentions. So it's 501. Right. 501. Okay. All right. Um, the uh, FERCOG assessment we don't have yet either. Um, Casey okay. just got the, the uh, Veterans District Assessment, but I 
think I need to look. No, what I didn't get, I, I got that it was delayed, Brenda. They had a del they didn't have quorum for a meeting in December, so oh. they delayed it. I just sent Laura Thorne at the district a question to see if she could send me the numbers. The final and number. And I went okay. to the council meeting um, last Thursday for the COG, and we should have those numbers <laughs> relatively soon. I have what I think the number is. Yeah, we could plug it in good. offline and then get follow up. They usually send us that number the first week of February. I think it went down a little bit. Okay. All right. Um, I apologize. I did not uh, reconnect with the library today to make sure that they were coming tonight. Um, it, it was on the calendar, but um, they must have forgotten. So maybe next week. Yeah. What's that? Maybe yeah. we can try them next week. Um, okay. I know for. Um, for February 5th, um, I had a switcheroo, so we will not be reviewing police budgets next Monday. We will be reviewing um, treasure collector budgets. Okay. She should get the final number this Wednesday for health insurance, so if anything needs to change there, she can make those changes. Um, and then the police budgets will be at 5 p.m. on February 12th. So everything that was on March 18th will be, will be the fifth instead? Yeah, I'm confused. What? You know, I think this is an old, this is an old um, schedule. Because South County EMS last week had asked us to switch to March 18th, so I had to make Sarah go to February 12th. Now I'm making her go to February 5th. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll just Poor Sarah. Some. She said I asked her eight times. I said, no, I didn't. <laughs> it was only three. <laughs> so I think this is, we can get a new This is right oh. now. So we've yes. got February 5th, Treasurer Collector Town Accountant. February 12th is Police Tri Town and Select Board. We'll need to put library in here somewhere. Right. Um, 26th, the 19th we're not meeting because it's President's Day. 26th is going to be Senior Center, Select Board, Board of Health. And then March 5th and March 6th are the public hearings for the schools. Oh. March 11th, go ahead. Speaking of the schools, um, Casey had talked to, I think, Darius, who recommended that if we were going to come and ask questions that we should really be coming to the February meetings okay yes he suggested that if you guys have questions to go to the february meetings because things will probably be ironed out by march and he figured whatever you guys need to talk about is good feedback for everybody yeah. okay so those were on the 13th and 15th 13th and 15th here okay and what time are they held at uh, 6 p.m oh, i don't know i want to say uh, seven for some reason but i don't i, don't I know can't remember six. right now i went looking and i couldn't find it the other day margaret sorry can we, get a print, can we get a print out of that or this is the bottom of the agenda so it's on the agenda and next week's the meeting that has to be short right so yes. we can't necessarily yes. have the library that's yes. what i was right. thinking we can't fit the library in next week just check it casey can are the schools going to send us a copy of their budget ahead of time before I don't know let me reach out to Darius because that was probably the only thing we didn't hit on <laughs> when I talked to him I talked to him in a group so yeah let me reach out and I'll let you know otherwise David. yeah we we did get an initial draft for Deerfield Elementary School last week Trevor got it um, I could forward that on it's it's more of a little PowerPoint presentation in a real summary kind of format. Yeah, yeah but that's long. sort of helpful. She often puts together a narrative of like that, which may be helpful for people to, if they wanted to go ask questions, be better. To It'd be nice to see that have it ahead of time. You're yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but that's the only, that is the only one I have. Right, I don't have Frontier yet either. I, I think they voted it last week, but we haven't seen it yet. Okay. Where do they meet? The FRS? FRS meets in the, in the library upstairs, usually. 
Library? At the high school, the, the high school library. Yeah, the high school library, yeah. Oh, okay. The DES will usually meet in the library to do it. Unless it's a bigger form than it's in the cafeteria. I think it's at six, but it's it's on. You can find it online. I'll find it and email everybody. Um, I hope. <laughs> I wrote a note down to do that. Okay. The other thing that we have on the agenda tonight is um, <coughs> the um, oh gosh, the taxes discussion. We talked briefly about this last week, I think. Um, I went back, oh, hang on. Let me fix my sharing. Okay, they're six, both at six, at six then. All right, let me try this again. There, oh, we'll, we'll need to make that thing a little. So last, oh, I should talk about it. I can't go to the PDF. The oh. school, so. I need it in there. Okay. So we're talking about taxes and how our taxes compare to other people's taxes. So I went back and looked. Um, Dave brought up the question about whether the average single family tax bill included the the fire and water the numbers I had last week did not I went back and included them so they do include them here what I did was add just the South Deerfield fire and water because nobody pays South Deerfield and Deerfield they pay one of the other right um, so if you compare us to the full state there is I put a little arrow because I couldn't find the pink line last week so we're we're kind of in the middle right um, I sent this, I think I emailed out this spreadsheet to everybody. Mm -hmm. did, I, did I send it to you guys? I'll send it to you guys tonight. Um, Thank you. Select board spreadsheet. So if you want to see, like this is just the plot. If you go, like all the data is here too. So if you look, here's the full, the full state. And then for each of these categories, this is our ranking. This line is our ranking. So if we're 204, that means 203 other towns have higher EQV per capita than Deerfield does. Um, so if you scoot on over, here's our total budget. Um, residential levy, we're 257. This is out of 351 total towns. Um, so you can see where we are numbers wise and then percentage wise for each of these categories. Somewhere in here is single family tax bill. Uh, there it is. So we're 166th for um, single family tax bill, which is 47%. So we're pretty much right in the middle. What do you mean by 47%? There's 40, that's 50. 47% of. 166 uh, is 47% of 351. So there's. We're in 46%. 46%. Yeah. 53% who have higher tax bills. Have lower tax bills. Uh, 351 towns? And yeah. we're 166? We're 166. Right. So that you, I thought you said that means there's, oh, oh, sorry, 165 ahead of you. Right. Right. Beg your pardon. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, and that's true. What we did was we did the full state. I did Western Massachusetts, which is the four counties in Western Mass. Um, my definition of Western Mass, I don't know if it's the official. So like Berkshire, Hampshire, Franklin, and Hamden. Hamden, thank you. Um, I did just Franklin County. I did all the towns in the state that are between 4,000 and 6,000 people. And then just because I was interested, I did Eastern Mass um, and see how we compare to Eastern Mass. And I'll show you what the definition of that is. So here's the full state. So we're kind of right in the middle for single family tax bill. And then I took the residential levy and divided it by the number of people in town, residential levy per capita. I added in our fire and water bills. Um, for that. So we're again kind of right in the middle, but a little lower than we were. Here's Western Mass. We are number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're number 11 out of all the towns in Western Mass. Um, that's budget. That's, that's. So this is single family tax bill. Okay. Average single family tax bill. 
Um, and then if we look at our budget per capita, which is what we were talking about, we're down a little farther. So we're right, right here. Budget being the money we spend, right? Yes. Mm. Yep. So here's nothing's quite perfect, right? right? So, but this is budget per capita with fire and water. What I added to, so we can get off of the online thing, we get our what is reported as our total budget. I added to that our fire and water levy. I don't know if there's any other money that fire and water get that's not the levy. So it, it might actually be a little higher than this, but. It's not perfect, but it at least gives you sort uh, of so a, you, a visual. Well, it gives you an idea of what the levy, you know, what yeah. your levy is. So, yeah. so that budget per capita is what the it's town of Deerfield spends for operations plus the warrants mm -hmm. plus the levy the fire district made. In the water district, yep. In the water, okay. And where are we on that? Right here. You see that pink line? Where the pink That's, one? This is the Western Mass. This is west this is four, out of Western four west, Mass, four, four counties. counties. Yeah. So we're not spending, we're not way out of sync with many towns. Yeah. No towns. Oh, really? We're in line. That's it. Right? Yeah, I think, so, it's, I think it's a great tool that you've got up there because yeah. people can look at it and. Now, I mean, yeah. the budget per capita okay. really is sort of a measure of what non residential revenues do we get? If no, you think about it, because it's like if we could be, we could be spending a huge amount per capita and still have a low tax bill. If well, if you look at it's very interesting. If you look at Hancock Row, see Hancock Row and Monroe and Irving right here. Yeah, um, see there, this is their average single family tax bill. This is their budget yeah. per capita. Here's Row, mm -hmm. Monroe, Irving. Oh my! Mm -hmm. Right. It's like crazy what it's they're. Like money for yeah, they have the money to spend. They, they have, do plant, few other yeah, things. Yeah, they have big commercial or industrial they facilities. The Shaker Village. They, well, no, that, that's in Richmond, believe it or not. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. Yeah, is they it? have um, uh, Brody Mountain, which is a huge vacation kind of thing. Oh, yeah, that's they right. Money for all of that um, second home uh, condo stuff. And then yeah. they have these giant windows that are on top of the mountain. That's, that's right. Maybe that's what we should do with our ex excess land. Well, we have a windmill up there next to you. Replace the Christmas tree on Sugarloaf with a big windmill. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right, so here we are in Franklin County. We are the second highest um, single family tax bill in Franklin County. Um, if we look at our levy per capita though, um, so this is residential levy per capita and then total levy per capita and budget per capita. And here again, you can see Irving Monroe Row, they spend a ton of money. So I actually took them out um, to look at that with, without them <laughs> if, in case that's of any interest. So, you know, I don't know. I don't think it tells us anything shocking. Um, other than we are, I mean, we're towards the upper end of single family um, bills and budget per capita. We are above Greenfield, that's it. Yep, here's Greenfield. In which one? Yeah. We're both. Both. All right, and then here's the 4,000. Let's do Eastern Mass first. So this is all of Eastern Mass. I picked the five counties right around Boston. Um, I don't know why, just because I was interested. So here is Deerfield compared to them. So it sort of confirms that Eastern Mass is much more expensive than um, Western Mass, right? Because <laughs> there's very few towns over there that are um, 
lower than we are. So then if you look at the 4,000 to 6,000, we're pretty low in that 4,000 to 6,000 range. This is, I think, wow. oh, that's residential levy. Let's start where we were. So Single family tax bill. Is that statewide towns? This is statewide towns, 4,000 to 6,000. And, mo and if you look at these towns, almost all of them are Eastern Mass towns. Yeah. But I mean, Hadley, I don't know. There's a couple that are, there are a few that are out here, but a lot How of them are, are really Eastern town? Mass. What's that? How are we higher than Edgar Town? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And then budget per capita um, is here. Wait, a single family tax bill, is that, so is that related? So this to is average single family tax bill. So if you take the median house price in Deerfield, <coughs> that's the tax bill that house pays. But I was just struck by Mark's comment about Egerton because the, so the town like Egerton, of course, has probably more than half our second homes and people who don't live there. How is that factored into this at all when you say a single family tax bill? You're talking about a single family, the bill associated with a, a piece of residential real estate. single family house, regardless, I guess, of whether anybody lives there full time. I, okay. I think. Yeah, I, I'm just assuming. Bill, right? mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Although, yeah, so, that does mean they have fewer services. The thing is, yeah, there's so many more houses there to, to fund the services right. for very few and people. Specifically, right. school. That's oh, that's true. School. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So you have a lot of very expensive homes with smaller tax bills than you would have here. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, we're going to make our school less good. <laughs> solve a lot of our problems. Oh dear. All right. Maybe we need term limits on finance committee. So these are there. I've emailed everybody that did. Did I send it to you? I did. Okay. Um, I'll add the select board. I didn't send it to you. Good, good stuff. So. Yeah. Thanks, it's it's interesting. It, it helps me think about it a little bit. Yeah. So, all right. So I think we are set for the evening. Anything else anybody wants to talk about? I mean, you're looking for a motion to adjourn, is that? Yeah, we're ready. I'll make that motion. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. second it. Any discussion? <laughs> no. Nope. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, unanimous 600. We're adjourned at 634 p.m. Make a motion to um, adjourn the select board. Second. All those in favor? Melchie, aye. Chair McDaniel, aye.